of a very different type of um, teaching that we've been doing. So hang on one second, I've got more friends coming in. Okay, I think we're good. Um, so I'll, in a minute, I'll go over some of the things that we're bringing back. So new families know and families who have been here for um, a couple of years will um, be happy to hear that these things are coming back that we haven't been able to do. Um, but um, during um, COVID for the last two and a half years, we immediately went when, um, when the world shut down to doing um, online teaching with a very modified program, which is not ideal for preschoolers, um, but we worked hard to make that work. And then the following September of 2020, we reopened and we have stayed open ever since and um, had some very rigid protocols in place, both through the Department of Health and the CDC um, that I think were instrumental in our being able to keep the school open for the last two years. Um, and now after that, we're making some changes to get back to normalcy, which we all desperately need. Um, but I will tell you that some things don't change whether we're in a pandemic or not. And that's our two focuses. And our number one um, focus for all of our children is their safety in our school. And after that, our number one thing that we want is to instill in them their lifelong love of learning. And I've heard so many wonderful stories from parents when they've come in to drop off paperwork or called in to um, get their registration done where they say, you know, every time we drive by the school, our child is saying, when can I go back? When can I see my friends? And that's just the type of environment we want. We want the children to be excited to come in and learn every day, to make new friends, um, to have really great exploratory experiences. And that's a partnership that we share with you. So um, what we would like to do is have open communication. Um, if we have concerns or if we have um, ideas that you wanna share, feel free to bring them with us and we'll go over ways to communicate a little bit further down. Um, so two years ago in COVID, we went to doing the parent orientation virtually. And when we said coming back to normalcy and met with the teachers and tried to decide what to do, um, they overwhelmingly wanted to keep the parent orientation done this way. Because in the past, you would come in for meet and greet. You'd spend about 15 minutes in the classroom with your teacher and your child. And then we would take all of the parents away and leave the children in the classroom. And the parents would come in um, to the um to the sanctuary and we would kind of do what I'm doing now. And the teachers always felt like they didn't have enough time in that 15 minutes to get to know you, to let you ask questions and to share information with you. So by us doing this orientation online, that means when you come to your meet and greet over the next two days, um, you'll have more time in there with your teachers to get to know them a little bit, to see your child exploring the room and, and to ask questions of, of your teachers. So uh, feedback is welcome if we like doing it this way or would rather go back in the future to how we used to do it. Okay, um, that said, I'm gonna say that what I'm going over with you is mostly rules of the road. You're all muted, so if you're snoring, I won't be hearing it. <laughs> There's a lot of things here that are just to help us to navigate the year um, more gracefully and kind of in a more coherent manner. So a lot of these things, um, I'm, I'm just saying to try to help us get off on the right foot and um, almost everything that I am telling you, you would find in this um, staff handbook, which is on the website too. So it's a lot of our policies and protocols and things that we do for safety. Um, everything is in there for um, what kind of snacks to bring for the kids to what to do if we have a snow day or if a child is sick. Um, so all of those things are in there. Um, but we're just going to kind of highlight some of them and do a little overview of them today. Okay. Um, when you come in for your meet and greet, your teachers will share some information that's more specific to your classroom. Like the two-year-olds will find out, you know, how many diapers to bring in and things like that. Um, and that's a time when you can ask your ch uh, child's teacher specifics for your child. Okay. Um, if you have questions, um, you can email to me 
And then what I'll do is post the questions and answer them for everybody because a lot of questions that come up during this, a lot of other families may have too. So when we're done, I'll go through the questions, I'll answer them and I'll send an email out to everybody uh, answering each question as best I can, okay? Um, so just a little bit about our school. We've been here for over 30 years. We are um, licensed by the Department of Education. So we have some pretty rigorous standards that we have to um, abide by, which again, plays into the safety, the well-being, and our approaches to learning for your child. Um, we are overseen through the Discovery United Methodist Church by a board that's called the Weekday Ministries Board. Um, we have an awesome panel there. One of the people that is on the board has been previously a preschool teacher, a preschool director, and um, a licensing inspector. So she knows every aspect of preschools and she's a phenomenal resource for us. Um, the board is very supportive of us and um, they're wonderful people to reach out to. If you ever have a problem with the school that you can't resolve with myself, then it would go to the board um, to be taken care of there. I don't know if we've ever had to do that, but that's there for you to know. Um, one reason I'm mentioning the board is because we like to have a parent representative on the board. The board meets for approximately one hour, approximately six times a year. And then we do some things by email. We had a dad on our board, um, Todd Fat, for the last three years, but his youngest one graduated last year. Todd was wonderful, a great resource, um, a great voice for parents and, you know, giving their perspective when we were looking at changes to make or, you know, ideas for things to do with the children. So if any of you is interested in, um, you know, donating that, I'd say six to eight hours of time throughout the year and to really get the inside scoop of the back <laughs> behind the scenes, you know, how the preschool runs, please just shoot me an email. Um, we would love to bring somebody on board to replace Todd. Okay. Um, so some of the things that we are putting in place for our post COVID get back to normalcy is that we're no longer wearing masks. Teachers and, and students have been masked for the last two years. Um, we think it's very important for the children to be able to see our expressions to help their social emotional development. We also think it's very important for children, especially our um, uh, English language learners, to be able to see our faces and how we're forming um, sounds and things. So if you want your child to wear a mask, we'll do everything to help them keep it on. If you want periodically for your child to wear a mask because there's spikes that are happening, you know, in our area um, with, with the virus, um, just let us know and we'll do our best to help accommodate that. Along with that, vaccinations for your child for um, COVID are also optional, but if you do choose to do that and can um, give us a copy of the vaccine to keep with their uh, vaccination records in their file, we'd appreciate it. Um, we're back to mixing classes, which the teachers are over the moon. So for example, music classes will be mixed so that there's um, children from a couple of classes at a time together. Playground time will be mixed so that children can um, be playing with friends from other classes. They're done by um, age group. So there'll be two two-year-old classes out on the playground at a time instead of just one, et cetera, like that. Um, our extended day has mixed classes in it. We're allowing parents back into the classroom for volunteering. So your teachers will um, give you either sign up sheets or on their Shutterfly sites, ways that you can sign up to volunteer to come in for a specific celebration or to help make our Easter bonnets for the Easter parade. Um, some teachers uh, like to have mystery readers where a parent comes in to read a story with the children. We have sorely missed having our parents in the classrooms during the last two years. So, you know, jump all over that, sign up and come on in. We'd love to have you here. We'll also be bringing back performances um, in, the in the sanctuary. So um, you'll be getting information moving forward with that. The first performance we'll have is the week before Halloween. So if you can get that, it's on your um, parent calendar. If you can get that um, 
marked on your calendar to get the morning off to come in for, you know, about a half hour to see the kids do their little parade in their Halloween costume and a little wiggle and jiggle singing some songs for you. That's uh, a fun time that we enjoy as well. Um, and we have a, a couple of performances during the year and we'll let you know as we get closer to them. One thing that we have talked about a lot with the, um, with the teachers is that our, our little friends who are developing their immunity systems, having worn masks for the better part of two years, haven't gotten a lot of those germs in them to build up natural immunity that they would otherwise have built up. So we do have a little bit of concern that um, regular illness might be a little higher than pre-COVID. So um, we're gonna be mindful of that. We do something called a daily health check in the morning. And if your child comes in and their eyes are you know, bloodshot and running or there's green stuff coming out of their nose or something, we'll send them back home with you. Um, all of that is in the, the parent handbook too. But just to know that we really want your child here, but if a child's not feeling well, they don't participate well, um, they don't feel good, and um, we don't wanna spread that to other children. So if we can keep a sick child home for a day or two till they're feeling better, the outcome is, is much better. I would say over the last two years, it has been remarkable that we haven't had flu outbreaks, we haven't had, you know, croup, we haven't had any of those big outbreaks that we usually see during a school year. And we think it's because the kids were masked. The downside of that is they haven't been exposed to those things. So when they get a little exposure now, you know, they might get sick more quickly than they would have pre-COVID. Okay. Um, so any, any questions that you have or aren't sure of for the policy, what to do if it snows? Um, my child had a fever or threw up yesterday morning. Can they come back to school tomorrow? Any of those things, the answers are in that um, parent handbook. But if you're unsure, just give me a call or send me an email and I'll let you know. Just uh, FYI for those. If your child has a fever, we can't bring them back into the program until 24 hours of being fever free without any medication to help it. And children are wonders. So they'll come in and they'll say to us, yep, I threw up last night, but mommy said I have to go to school today anyway. <laughs> or we'll hear, yeah, mommy gave me a little bit of medicine this morning to make sure my fever stays down. And those are a little concerning <laughs> to us. So, you know, I know it's hard because you've got your work schedule or you've got a dental appointment or something, but really try to stick to those protocols because they're all there to try to help the whole um, school population stay safe. Okay. Um, I'm gonna move on to the paperwork. I know I've sent home several times over the summer, kind of bolded, this is the paperwork that you need. I've had a couple of families send me emails in the last day or two saying, oh my gosh, does my child have this in or that? I have um, the files and I'm going through them one at a time to check what's missing. And I I'll let you know as quickly as I can, if you're missing something. Um, one of the things you're going to see come home in your child's folder in the next week or two is a paper that looks like this. And what this is, is the contact information that you supplied on their registration form. Some of them might be missing something. It's a quirky thing that licensing has, like, I know that you're the mom and dad, but I also have to have it typed in that you're allowed to pick your child up. Obviously, mom and dad are allowed to pick their child up, but licensing makes us have every name of any person that could ever pick them up. So what we do is go through this um, and highlight anything that's missing and then um, send it back to you. And then there's a little place on the bottom for your signature and the date that you've checked it over. Um, and either everything's perfect on it or you've made the changes that we need to have in the computer system, again, required by um, licensing. Okay. If there's somebody that's going to pick up your child that's not on the list, we just need you to let us know ahead of time. You can do that in writing, and then we'll need to check an ID. And the other thing we do is I'll ask the child, like if you say, um, well, grandma's visiting from Oregon and she's going to pick him up today, I will ask you grandma's name, 
I'll look at her license and I will ask you, what does your child call grandma? And we'll say to the child before we dismiss them, who's that? And want to make sure that they know who that person is and it's comfortable. Again, that's just a um, for safety. Okay. All right. Um, when you go into your um, meet and greets in the next two days, your teacher will also have um, a form with contact information, email addresses, things like that. They're gonna ask you just to look over that one form for them and just initial by the end that everything's okay on it. And if it's not okay to go ahead and make the changes on it and we'll get that changed right away in the computer for the teachers as well. It's a lot of little housekeeping things, but it helps us to make sure all of our children are safe and, and accounted for. Okay. Um, our tuition is due on the first of the month. We've been very lenient during COVID, but they're going back to the protocol of if it arrives after the fifth of the month, um, there's a fine on it. If it comes after the 15th month of the month, that fine is higher. So let's avoid all those fines. <laughs> let's avoid the extra paperwork for me and just get you know your payments in um, on, the, on the first of the month. Um, there's the four ways to pay. One is to do check or cash. Um, and then you can do it PayPal on the website. And then the final one is if you want to send set up an order draft um, with your bank. And the way you do that is just to have it sent to um, Kids in Discovery Preschool at our address, which is 13,000 Gaten Road, um, Henrico 23233. I know several families have set that up. And I will say for setting up a, an auto draft, if you do that, Set your date a few days before the first of the month because sometimes that comes in late. If it comes in a couple of days late, we won't put a fee on that because we know in good faith it was set up um, with the bank. Um, if you pay for the whole year up front, you will have uh, a 2% discount on it. Um, and it's still not too late to do that. You can do that through September if you want to set that up. Okay. The, um, there's a lot of ways to communicate. Um, you can call the office phone, which you have that number. Um, you can email me and I have two email addresses that I use. The um, Gmail address that you got this link from is that's on my um, my iPad, my laptop, which goes with me everywhere. So I have that at home with me. I have it on weekends. I have it at two in the morning if I'm remembering something. So that's a really good way to contact me. I just ask that you whitelist me to make sure that I never go into your junk or you know, um, spam or anything. And then the other way is through our um, Outlook, uh, Kids in Discovery at discoverymethodist.org. And boy, is that a mouthful. <laughs> but that's our uh, other way um, to contact me um, through email. Your teachers set up private shutterfly sites. The only people that are invited to them other than your teachers and myself is you, the parents. If you would like a grandparent um, to have access to the shutterfly site, let your teacher know and we can add them to it. But it's very private. It's nothing that goes on Facebook or that is out for the you know general community. Your teacher will blog weekly on there for you. They'll post pictures of what's happening at, you know, in the classroom, in music class, um, out on the playground, anything like that. So you can kind of see what your children are doing. Um, and they'll also use that for signups for parties, um, to make Play-Doh to bring into the classroom, uh, to have conferences, anything like that. They may also use that or their email to, to just send you a notification to remind you that um, um, hey, next Tuesday, silly hat day, remember to wear a hat. So try to check in regularly. I always say to parents, if you can check in on your um, your school shutterfly site, either every Friday or every Sunday, so you know what's coming up or what happened during the last week, it's a great way to do that. And also, I know a lot of parents go on there and they look through the shutterfly stuff and they're like, I got it. Okay, my kid looked like he was having fun this week. It's really neat to sit your child down with you and let him look through those pictures with you because they'll start telling you more. They'll have the conversation going about what's happening in the class, or this is my friend I played with that day. 
And it's really nice for them to see it. They get very excited. You, we're walking around with our cell phones, taking pictures to put on the Shutterfly site. And as soon as you do it, the kids just say, can I see, can I see? <laughs> so if they see them with you, that's another way for us to have that good homeschool connection that you know what's happening at school is important at home and vice versa and that we're you know in a partnership together. So if you could take a few minutes on the weekend and just look at those pictures with your child, I know that you'll um, have some joy seeing them so excited about it. Okay, my um, effort is to return any email I get within 24 hours other than on, on vacations or um, uh, on the weekend, it might be a little bit slower. I do try to post on Sunday evenings updates for parents. Um, so if there's anything that you have to know, it'll be sometime, it might be 11 o'clock at night, maybe after your bedtime, but that's my time that I'm checking through everything for the week and making sure that I've updated you on anything that um, that is important for, for the school, okay? You can um, ask your, we have conferences in the fall and in the spring, but you can ask your teacher for a conference, vice versa, your teacher can ask you for a conference anytime that we think it's needed or if there's something that we're working on or concerned about. OK, it's really important to have that good communication with your teacher um, and as often and transparently as you want. But um, what's good is to do that by setting it up or emailing them and not during drop off or pickup time, because that's a special time where we really want to be focused on the children, welcoming them into the classroom. I remember when I was teaching, I'd be down, squatting down you know, shaking hands or high-fiving the children as they come in. And then, you know, one teacher, want, you know, one parent would want to tell me something that happened last night. And then four other children would come in the classroom and I didn't get to greet them because um, that parent, you know, was talking to me, which we want to talk about all those important things that are specific to your child and important to you. But if we could not do those at the drop-off and pick up, unless it's an absolute emergency, like, you know, if you want to tell us that on the way to school, they skid their knee, and they have a, you know, boo-boo, I just put a Band-Aid on in the car. Can you be checking on that? Absolutely. But uh, other things, if we can email them to the teacher or save them, you know, for to set up a conference time with them, just so we can really be focusing on the kids. We only have them for this much of their, you know, day. So we really want to spend that time focused on them if we can. Okay. Okay. Um, so a lot of parents ask, how can they help? What they, can they do? to prepare their children for school or around school or you know at school. So one of the things that I would say is if you could talk it up with your child to be excited about school, there's so many books in the library that are, you know, my first day of pre-K, my first day of preschool, um, show and tell, any of those kind of things so that they can um, be prepared for what's coming. If you have older siblings talking about how much they have fun in school really helps them. Um, and you being excited about it too. When your child comes home from school, many, many years ago, um, I started the two-year-old program here and my son was in my class. <laughs> and we would play and get messy and you know get paint in our hair and just have a really grand old time. And then we'd go home and sit down for dinner and my husband would say, Joseph, what did you do at school today? And he would think and think and think and say, nothing. And I would be like, all that work and effort. <laughs> so it's really good. Um, your teachers will have a white, a, white, a white erase board right outside the classroom. So when you're signing in and signing out, you can look at that and they'll give you a little, you know, a couple of teasers or topics we worked on today so that you can ask your child questions that are um, not just yes or no, but more open-ended. Like, oh, I see that you guys learned about spiders today. You know, can you tell me how you played with spiders or did you, you know, what was the story you read about spiders? You know, things like that to kind of interact with them for it, um, with them with it. So anything that you can do to um, get that conversation going, your monthly calendar that you get from the teacher will have like one little um, topic of the day to help you with that conversation starter. So maybe when you're having pancakes before you come to school, you can look at the calendar and see that it's spider day and, you know, say, Ooh, we're going to be learning about spiders today, you know, just to kind of get them excited about it. Another really great opportunity is when you're in in the next two days for the meet and greet um, to explore the classroom with them. See if you can find their name somewhere in the classroom or their picture. 
um, look about, you know, there's lots of things in the classrooms that are thematic to the name of that classroom. Look around and see what you can find, you know, sit down and look at a storybook with them and remind them that they're going to be able to do that, you know, all the time. Go into the kitchen set, just explore with them, be a child for a little bit and, you know, get them excited um, to see you excited about it. Okay. Okay. Other ways that you can help us is by labeling everything, label, label, label. So put their, any of their outerwear, any clothes that may come off of them, <laughs> go ahead and put your um, name on for them. If they use a lunchbox, if they're staying for lunch bunch or extended day, if they have one of those reusable snack bags, put their name on it. Um, their water bottles need their names on it. And every day their snack, whatever it comes in, has to have their name and the date on it. That's another licensing requirement for us. So just label everything. Teachers love when parents can um, be prompt at drop off and pick up. Um, when we have children that are coming in 10 or 15 minutes late, they've already missed a lot of that fun time. Um, and then the teacher kind of has to backtrack back to get that one child caught up. So if you can be here at nine and be here at 12, um, they really appreciate it. Um, you're gonna get at um, meet and greet a little tote bag with the school logo on it and a t-shirt and a um, folder in it with lots of information. Um, the folder and the tote bag can come back every single day. You can put their snack and their supplies in that. Um, it comes with them to school. It goes home every day. And if you can look in their folder each day to see if they have a little art project or if there's a note or anything in it. Um, it's really great if, and we know, um, especially with our younger ones, but during COVID that we've had less socialization time and it's very hard for every one of us, we know it, for our child to be crying when we're leaving them. What we ask you to do is come on in, you know, to the classroom in the morning, give them a quick hug goodbye, tell them they're gonna have a wonderful day and that you love them and then leave. And I promise you, if we don't settle them down very quickly, I will let you know. For our very young learners, our two-year-olds, who it may be their first time away, we will be having at the beginning of the year until we get the classes more settled, three teachers in the rooms with eight children. So, you know, there's plenty of lap space there for everybody, okay? Um, okay, just as far as our calendar goes, we mostly follow Henrico County Public Schools. Um, there's a couple of days that are different. All of our, our school closes down in February for one day for all of our staff to go to a day of professional development. Um, there's a couple of days where we have a performance and then the children are dismissed from the performance like right before winter break. Um, um, uh, but mostly we follow Henrico County. So if you have older children in school, you'll have the same days off and holidays. Um, Henrico County School moved back one week earlier, so so did we. And that means at the end of the year, it's moved back one week earlier too. Another thing we're excited to bring back that we haven't had um, during COVID is camp. So after the school is closed for the year, we're gonna have one week of camp this year. That's optional um, for, for you to sign up. We'll send more uh, information home after winter break, but the theme of it is um, beach. And we've been already excited planning for that. It's very different how we do that than our normal um, preschool day. So the children go from class to class and they maybe have a cooking class and, you know, they um, travel with a group and it, it's very different than how we do it. And the kids usually get pretty excited about that. Um, okay. I see that we're running out of time, so I'm going to go pretty quickly here. Um, the church back parking lot, which backs up to California Drive, um, there's going to be construction back there. I'm not sure when it's starting but there'll be construction back there. So our little guys, when they're on our playground and stuff, are gonna be excited seeing trucks and things. Um, just letting you know that we're gonna be getting a fence built on the field. We're gonna be adding new playground plays, but that's all after a lot of the construction at, at the back part of the parking lot is done there. So it'll be a little bit um, busier here. I don't know when it's starting, don't know how long it'll last, but we get some benefits from it when it's ultimately done, so, okay. Um, we are hope, oh, uh, we have on your calendar that um, for the three and four year olds, the Henrico County Police will be coming for tricycle safety. We'll send more information home about that. Um, we're hoping to have a family fun night in February um, and we'll have more information about that as we get further into the year. But I'm really hoping that we get a good turnout and a lot of uh, 
you know, fun activities and things. And some of them are family oriented for your whole family to work on together. Um, let's see. Um, we usually have a, a company, and this is one of the reasons the calendar was late coming out, called Medarba that comes into the school and does screenings for vision and hearing. But they no longer do that, but they have um, set up or, or offered if we do a community event. So I worked with the church and we're going to um, offer the Medarva screening during the fall festival, which is the Saturday before um, Halloween. And more information will come home from that for that. It takes about 10 minutes. Your child comes into a room. I'll be there with them. Um, they have to um, listen to animal sounds and, you know, tell what the animals are. And then they look at pictures and things. And they actually have a, like a camera that they take a picture of the child's eyes and then they can see if everything is um, working properly there. Uh, it's been a wonderful organization to work with. And over the years, we have had parents who have, you know, been notified to go get this checked and have ended up with, you know, glasses or things for their children. So more information will come for that. Okay. So when you come in tomorrow or Wednesday, go ahead and bring your basket, your bag of supplies, have your thing, you know, it labeled. Um, I just hand that out to the teacher and we'll take care of it later. Then, like I said, just explore, have fun with your child, try to make them feel comfortable, you know, make sure that they know who the teachers are. So when they're um, left here with the teachers next week, um, they have a, a, at least a, you know, a face to put them to. Um, um, and then make sure you take home your tote bag and any information the teacher gives you. Okay. We are really looking forward to a, a wonderful year hopefully with not a lot of sickness. Um, uh, we have an excellent team of teachers. Many of them have been here for more than 10 years. Um, um, we're happy to have all of our returning families back and looking forward to meeting everyone with our new families and getting to know your children. Um, I try to be very transparent and open with communication. There's no such thing with me as a question that's silly. So if you have a question or you need clarification, please don't hesitate um, to reach out for me with it. The last thing I wanted to say was uh, just a reminder that if you have any questions or I didn't cover something that you wanted information on, go ahead and send it to me in an email. I'll compile any questions if we have them um, and send them out to everybody this evening, okay? All right. Um, I really looking forward to seeing you all coming in for the next two days. Oh, just one last thing. We're parking our cars in the parking lot, which we haven't done during COVID. And you're going to walk your child in for the door by the red and yellow sheds right by the office. Okay. If you're all the way down at the other end of the hall, after you drop your child off, you can go out the other door, but everyone's going to come in by that door by the office. Okay. Um, yeah, that's the only other thing that I think I needed to let you know. Okay, that was a lot. I don't see anybody keeled over sleeping, <laughs> so that's good. I see a lot of little friends there looking on, so I'm going to wave bye to all of them, and we will see you with your little learners um, Tuesday or Wednesday morning, okay? Thank you for listening in, and again, shoot me your questions. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.